In today's episode, we'll take a filmmaker's perspective on the Twinplex Pro-Grade Lavalier microphones. Let's get in there and take a look. Now, if you're not really in the market for a $450 Pro-Grade Lavalier microphone, totally understood. We're not trying to sell these here. Just doing an overview to let you know what's available out there. And for those of you that are in the market more for $30 Lavalier microphones that you can buy online, this is really kind of an educational piece to help you understand what's the difference between one of those more affordable Lavalier microphones versus one of these Pro-Grade Lavalier mics. First up, some samples from a variety of different Lavalier microphones, kind of in the same grade. This first audio test is the DPA 4160. It's mounted on my shirt just here. It is the type of microphone that's actually made to go through the buttonhole. So it has a little kind of spout that kind of sticks through a buttonhole. And I'm wearing it on the placket of my shirt just to give you a sense for the overall sound quality. Uh, what else can I tell you about? Oh, the audio is going into the Audio Limited A10 wireless system. It is then coming out as AES Digital directly into my sound device's 633. So we're only going through one analog to digital conversion process here, and that's being done in the Audio Limited A10. In this sample, you're hearing the Countryman B6. It's mounted on my chest just underneath my shirt here. And we have that going into an Audio Limited A10 transmitter. That's coming to the receiver in, that is coming out of the receiver as AES42 digital into my sound device's 633. So it's going through one stage of analog to digital conversion. And this is what that sounds like. We're also essentially bypassing the preamplifiers in the 633, only using the Audio Limited's uh, preamplifier. So this is the TL48 Twinplex. I have it hidden under my shirt here. This is on channel one. Hidden under my shirt here using the included um, little kind of silicone um, concealment accessory. I'm not sure what to call it other than that. <laughs> hidden under my shirt here under my chest. And this is going into an Audio Limited A10 transmitter over to the receiver. The receiver is outputting an AES42 digital signal to the sound device's 633. And we had to apply 31 dB of gain to get this. So that was hitting somewhere around uh, right around 0 dBU on the meters. In this case, on channel number two, we have the TL47. TL47 has a, is supposed to have a different voicing than the TL48. What Shure describes as natural, and in this case we have the presence cap on it. It comes with a couple of different caps. In this case we have the presence cap on it, and it is being worn here just on my shirt, underneath my shirt, against my chest. That's coming into the Audio Limited A10 transmitter, which I'm wearing down here, and over at the receiver, the receiver is outputting an AES42 digital signal into the sound device's 633, so that's what that sounds like. Anything interesting here on this one? This one has a different shape than the TL48. The TL47 has a kind of shorter, a little bit squatter kind of shape to it. And as I mentioned before, has a variety of different caps you can put on it. There's a flat cap and there is a presence cap. The presence cap is best used if you need a little bit of high frequency boost. For example, when you're hiding the microphone underneath clothing and things of that nature, which is why we used it in this case. So. Here is a little test here for the TL47, omnidirectional, of course. With a focus on sound quality, there are a few things that Shure has done with the Twinplex in its design to really ensure that it gets great audio quality. First of all, they have two diaphragms in the microphone capsule. So that means that you have more surface area, and Shure claims that that will give you better bass response and cleaner high-frequency response as well. Let your ears be the judge. They also claim they can achieve a higher dynamic range. So it's spec'd here at 117.5 decibels for dynamic range, which is pretty impressive for a lavalier microphone. A lot of times with the miniaturization of microphones, especially lavaliers, they have to make some engineering compromises to make it fit into a small package that you can hide on somebody's body or clip onto their lapel. But in this case, with the dual diaphragm design, they've been able to achieve a really pretty impressive dynamic range. In addition to that, the sound pressure levels that this microphone can handle are pretty impressive. They're spec'd at 142 dB SPL. That is really loud. We're talking about so loud that you, you're damaging your ears when, you, when you're listening to sounds this loud. 
But this can be really useful for situations where you're planting the microphone to record that really, really loud sound. So if you're maybe doing sound effects on cars or miking the launch of a rocket or maybe trying to get the sound of a jet passing by, whatever it may be, you can handle very, very loud sound pressure levels with the Twinplex. Durability is a huge issue with lavalier microphones as well. These things get dropped, they get tweaked, they get yanked, they get all sorts of things. And in fact, on lavalier microphones, in my experience, there are one of two things that often fail. Number one is the cable. It's almost always the cable, it seems like. And um, it just happens. And it's not the actor's fault necessarily. In a lot of cases, they're focused on their job. They may forget that they're wearing a microphone. If you've done your job well, especially in hiding the microphone and making it comfortable for them. During wardrobe changes, they're in a hurry. Um, whatever the case may be, they just get a lot of abuse. And the one thing that Shure has done here is really kind of focused on the quality and the durability of the cable. So first of all, the internals of the cable, they are using medical grade wiring inside. They are using a sheath material around the outside that has this very supple feel to it. It doesn't appear to have a lot of memory effect either. So it seems like it will also hide very nicely under clothing. So it measures in at 1.6 millimeters. So it's thick enough to be durable but it's not so thick that it makes it very hard to hide it under clothing. The sheathing is also paintable, so if you need to paint it to hide it on wardrobe, you can do that as well. And then finally, Shure has tested these quite extensively. They've put it in their cable testing machines and they've tweaked them around <laughs> in all sorts of directions. They claim that they last 100 times longer than their competition. Hard to know what to make of that spec, but I would say that based on what I've seen so far, they are very well made. So the cheap $30 lavalier microphones that you're going to find out there, typically those cables will come and they'll be kinked out of the box because they were wrapped in this kind of back and forth pattern and they put a little twist tie on it. Um, this is not that at all. It has what seems like, again, very little memory effect and also doesn't seem to transfer a lot of the sound. Like, for example, if I rub on the cable down here, It's not transferring it to the microphone capsule in, in the form of vibration. You may hear me doing this because there is sound when I rub my finger against it and it's picking that up in the capsule, but it doesn't appear to be picking up the vibrations. So it has this very supple feel to it and it doesn't feel like it's gonna dry out really quickly. It gets this really interesting material. So looks like they've done a pretty nice job there. Time will tell. The next thing that can really affect lavalier microphones is if moisture gets into the capsule and you might think to yourself, well, I'm never shooting out in the rain, so it's not an issue for me. Typically, rain is not the issue, it is sweat that is the issue. And when you have actors where you have buried the lavalier microphone on them and they're sweating profusely, because that happens in a lot of different types of pictures for a variety of reasons, whether they're just nervous or they're doing a lot of physical activity, whatever it may be, if moisture gets onto the diaphragm of the microphone, the microphone basically stops working. So it's really important that the microphone be able to deal with those kinds of circumstances. And Shure's done something very interesting with the Twinplex. They have actually applied a nano coating to the cap that sits on the microphone, which has a hydrophobic effect. That is to say, when water or moisture comes in contact with it, it basically repels it and it runs off. So I haven't noticed any issues yet. Um, I haven't tested it super extensively yet, but that's something I'll be keeping an eye on. We'll probably have to do a follow-up at some point in the future. Connectors are important as well. You have to be able to connect to a variety of different wireless systems that are available out there and all the different types of connectors that they have. Uh, the Twinplex can adapt to pretty much all of them. If yours is not represented, they also have a micro dot connector, which then you can buy an adapter for almost any microphone system out there. So for example, the Sennheiser AVX and G3, G4s, um, those have a 3.5 millimeter TRS connector, locking connector. In the Twinplex line, what you would do is you'd get the micro dot version and get a 3.5 millimeter Sennheiser connector to go to that, and then you can get it into your Sennheiser system. In this case here, for example, we're using the Audio Limited A10, which is a three pin Limo connector, and they offer one of those. What's nice about Twinplex is, of course, it comes with this price, it had better, <laughs> and it does come with a very nice carrying case, which is a semi hard case. All of the accessories you need to hide it, including the alligator clips, vampire clip, and also windscreens. It comes with also a concealer for hiding it underneath clothing, along with some adhesive to attach to that concealer. And so that works nicely as well. The concealer is a silicone material. 
In addition to that, there are a variety of different models. So in this case, we're using the TL48, which is really designed for cases where you're going to hide it underneath clothing, from what I can tell. It comes with a fixed capsule. That is to say, there are not removable caps to tune the response of the microphone. That is why I believe it's made for hiding underneath clothing based on my testing so far. So that seems to work very nicely. There is also a TL47. The TL47 does have the removable caps. It's a slightly different shape. It's a little bit wider in terms of diameter, uh, but not quite as long. And it does have these removable caps, which allow you to tune the sound response of the microphone. So they have a flat response or a very even response across the audio spectrum. And they also have a presence cap, which makes it so that if you're going to hide it underneath clothing, where you're going to lose a little bit of that high frequency energy because the clothing will filter that out, um, you can give it a little bit of a presence boost so it kind of still captures that high frequency energy. So overall, there is a look at the Twinplex from Shure. I hope that was helpful for you. If you do have questions or insights or thoughts, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that, and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.